A 52-year-old female presented with complaint of mild pain in mandibular premolar area. Radiograph is attached. The patient reported no other systemic disease history. What is the diagnosis? Now, in this particular case, uh, if we just see the radiograph here, and the radiograph shows some radiolucent areas in the premolar region, right? At the same time, you'll be able to see some radio opaque areas as well. So, this is the radio opaque area, and here. Uh, this uh, can be just these all are the radio lucent areas right now uh, if you just see this particular term that is called as the florid cemento osseous dysplasia now this particular condition is often diagnosed based on characteristic clinical presentation and radiographic appearance so what happens actually a sclerotic mass is generally seen okay generally you'll see a sclerotic mass and clinically that will be perforating and that will be more common in the edentulous uh, regions but sometimes since it is present these radiolucencies are present in the mental foramen area there is mental foramen and that is the reason these uh, lesions are causing the pain in premolar area otherwise it would have been asymptomatic here Right now, another thing about the florid cemento osseous dysplasia is that if we see the radiographic feature of this particular disease, so this starts as a radiolucent mass, radiolucent mass, and then it starts becoming radio opaque. Okay, so there is a transition from radiolucency to the radio opacity, and that's why you are seeing that this is a young patient. Okay, uh, obviously it is not edentulous, so we can just consider that yes, 52 years of age patient is still having the young lesion actually. So saying young patient would be incorrect, but it is going to have the young lesions here. And these road radio lucent areas are going to fill by the radio opacities and they'll become radio opaque in the long run, right? So now what is the problem with this? Actually, uh, due to the radio opaque lesions, there will be poor vascular supply and that makes the bone prone to infection. So yes, if infection is there, what will happen? There will be osteomyelitis in this particular patient and that's why we have to follow the preventive management in these kind of patients, okay? So uh, whenever there is osteomyelitis, we have to go for surgery and antibiotics have to be prescribed in that particular case so if we just try to understand this uh, we'll just see uh, the key concept as well so the florid cemento osseous dysplasia radiographically lesion is going to demonstrate a maturation pattern that is similar to that noted in the other form of cemento osseous dysplasia so what is the pattern here the lesions are predominantly radiolucent but with time become mixed then predominantly radio opaque with only a thin radiolucent rim around these so initially these will be radio opaque and as the time begin uh, keeps on passing they will become mixed and finally they will become the radio opaque but still there will be a ring around this radio opacity that will be radio lucent so that is the whole core of this particular question and it is not associated with any systemic disease like we have thyroid problem in case of Peges disease and other yeah, uh, cementomas also are going to have some kind of systemic disease so that's why the florid cemento osseous dysplasia will be the correct answer here and most importantly it is going to have the female predilection in this particular case so cemento osseous dysplasia generally are more prone or more common in female than in Male. So that is also one differentiating feature here. So answer to this question is going to be none other than your option second that is florid cemento osseous dysplasia.